Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Book summary of Anything You Want by Derek Sivers. Don't be on your deathbed someday, having squandered your one chance at life, full of regret because you pursued small distractions instead of big dreams, Derek Sivers writes. It is not about money and business. Bringing dreams to life for others and oneself is the goal. Starting a business is a fantastic way to make a difference in the world while also improving yourself. When you start a company, you're starting an experiment in utopia. It's the place where you can create your ideal world. Never do anything solely for the sake of money. Don't go into business solely for the sake of making money. Only respond to calls for assistance. Rather than persistently promoting what isn't working, success comes from persistently improving and inventing. Your business plan has been rendered moot. Until you start doing something, you have no idea what people really want. Being able to start with no money is a distinct advantage. Starting to help people does not necessitate the use of money. You can't please everyone, so be proud of the people you exclude. Make yourself completely unnecessary to the operation of your company. As long as you're happy, there's no point in doing anything else. Do only what makes you happy. Success comes from persistently improving and inventing, not from persistently doing what isn't working, says Albert Einstein. When deciding whether or not to do something, if you have any feelings other than wow, then don't do it. That would be absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Yes, please. And then tell them no. The following quote from Steve Blank should be kept in mind whenever you think you know what your new business will be doing, no plant survives the first contact with customers. Necessity is a great teacher, as the saying goes. Always remember that everything you do is done for the benefit of your customers. Every decision you make, including whether to expand your business, raise money, or promote someone, should be based on what is best for your customers. It may seem counterintuitive, but the best way to grow your business is to devote all of your attention to your current customers. Just amaze them, and they'll tell everyone about it. Beginning small allows you to devote 100% of your energy to actually solving real problems for real people, says the author. Never lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing in the first place. In order to succeed, you must care more about your customers than you do about yourself. Begin operating your business as if you don't need the money, and it will almost certainly come your way. When one customer does you wrong, remember the hundred thousand others who did not do the same. Please keep in mind that it's often the small details that really impress people and cause them to tell all of their friends about you, says the author. The benefit of being ignorant of the norms of the world is that you can make decisions based on what seems like the right thing to do rather than simply following the crowd. At the end of the day, it's about who you want to be rather than what you want to have. If you want to be a true business owner, make sure you can step away for a year and come back to find your company doing better than it was when you left. Believe, but double check. Keep this in mind when delegating. You have to do both at the same time. It is not about money and business. Bringing dreams to life for others and oneself is the goal. Starting a business is a fantastic way to make a difference in the world while also improving yourself. Never do anything solely for the sake of money. Don't go into business solely for the sake of making money. Only respond to calls for assistance. Rather than persistently promoting what isn't working, success comes from persistently improving and inventing. It is not necessary to have money in order to begin helping people. As long as you're happy, there's no point in doing anything else. Do only what makes you happy. When deciding whether or not to do something, if you have any feelings other than wow, then don't do it. That would be absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Yes, please. And then tell them no. The most important takeaways. Put an end to what isn't working for you. Rather than continuing to do what isn't working, success comes from persistently improving and inventing, says the author. Perseverance is essential, but even perseverance will not be enough to help you overcome a bad idea, tactic, or strategy that is simply not working for you. So, instead of putting all of your effort into something that isn't working, keep improving and inventing until you find the one thing that does. Do it for the benefit of the customers. Always remember that everything you do is done for the benefit of your customers. Every decision you make, including whether or not to expand your business, raise money, or promote someone, should be based on what is best for your customers. If you're ever unsure about which tasks to prioritize, simply ask your customers the open-ended question, how can I best assist you now? After that, concentrate on meeting those requests. For entrepreneurs, it's easy to become engrossed in their vision and objectives. Your goals should, however, be consistent with what your customers want. Otherwise, you will be doing your company a disservice. 
Those who pay you for your product or service are the ones who have purchased it from you. Concentrate your efforts on them first. Begin with a small budget. By starting small, you can devote 100% of your energy to actually solving real problems for actual people, says the author. It provides you with a more solid foundation on which to build your future. It does away with the stumbling blocks of large infrastructure and gets right to the point. Don't waste your time in the beginning trying to raise large sums of money or putting together a complicated organizational structure around your company. Keep things as small and straightforward as possible. As a result, you will be able to more effectively test ideas, iterate, and solve problems in an agile manner. It is acceptable to exclude individuals. You must be able to confidently exclude people while also stating what you are not. You will win the hearts of the people you desire if you follow these instructions. Everybody is not going to be interested in your product, service, or words of wisdom. Instead of attempting to please everyone, concentrate on the people who are enthusiastic about your product. Make yourself comfortable with being explicit about who your product is intended for and who it is not intended for. By excluding the people who you don't want, you'll increase the loyalty of the people who you do want, which will benefit you in the long run. Keep in mind why you're participating in the game. Never lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing in the first place. Are you able to assist others? Do they appear to be content? Are you content with your life? Are you making a profit? Isn't that sufficient? Don't get caught up in the trap of constantly expanding your business. Who is it that you are scaling that business for in the first place? Is it true that expanding your business makes you happier? If you're making money, enjoying yourself, and helping others, that may be sufficient. Don't do it solely for the sake of money. If you set up your business in such a way that you don't need the money, people will be more willing to pay you. When someone is doing something for money, people can detect it, just as they can detect the presence of a desperate lover. It's a turnoff for me. When someone does something out of love, when they are generous rather than stingy, when they are trusting rather than fearful, this law is activated, we want to give to those who give. One more business tell, set up your business as if you don't need the money, and it will almost certainly come your way. Be a giver of your time. People will be able to tell if you are doing it solely for financial gain. While being generous may appear to be a riskier strategy in the short term, it will pay off in ways that you may not anticipate or be able to predict in the long term. Even the smallest details are important. When considering how to grow your company, it's tempting to try to think of all the big ideas and come up with game-changing, massive action plans that will change the world. Although it's important to remember that it's often the small details that really impress people and cause them to tell all of their friends about you. Make an effort to do something that will make each customer smile rather than thinking about a complicated plan to improve your company's performance. If you can make someone smile, they are more likely to feel positive about your company and tell their friends and family about it. A simple, light-hearted email might be all that's needed. Maintain the human element in your process. No matter how big you want to become one day, never forget the fact that you never have to behave like a big boring company. Over the course of 10 years, it seemed like every time someone exclaimed how much he adored CD Baby, it was because of one of these small, amusing human touches, says the author. Just because you've grown to a certain size or want to improve the efficiency of your processes doesn't mean you have to lose sight of the human element of your company. People remember the human touches, so don't fall into the trap of making your company boring just because it has grown in size. Choosing between self-employment and business ownership a significant distinction exists between being self-employed and being a business owner. Being self-employed initially appears to be a liberating experience, until you realize that if you take time off, your business will fail. When running your own business, create a system that allows you to step away for a year and return to find that your company is doing better than it was before you left. Being a business owner implies that your company can function without your direct involvement. Being self-employed implies that the success of the company is dependent on you. In the case of being self-employed, you are the slave of the business. When you own your own business, you can enjoy the freedom that you imagined when you first thought about starting a company in the first place. Don't engage in activities that you despise. Always remember that you have the ability to make your role whatever you want it to be. Anything you despise doing, someone else enjoys doing. So go out and find that person and delegate the task to her. As the owner of your company, you have the ability to create the dream position you've always wanted. Instead of putting up with the things you despise, find someone who enjoys doing them, hire them, and then devote your time and energy to something else entirely. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.